Hi everyone, I'm uh, Zach Robinson. I'm one of the founders and the distiller at Shortpath Distillery. Um, I'll get the slides up. Uh, just a little bit about me. I'm a dyed-in-the-wool Yankee um, and really care about local um, and have my entire life. I hold the general view that my great aunt holds that uh, New England should secede because Texas won't. Uh, <laughs> so that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, the Lindy effect. Um, so, <clears throat> right. Uh, so it's best to be local because local is Lindy. Uh, the Lindy effect is the effect that things that last continue to last. Um, it comes from Lindy's uh, Deli in New York, and it's where in the 60s and 70s all of the local comedians would gather and go over their shows, and they began to realize that the longer they were on TV, the longer that they continued to be on TV. Um, so another way to put it is everything is halfway through its life. Uh, shoes are 20,000 years old, they'll probably be around for another 20,000 years. Uh, trains are 200 years old, they've been predicting the death of trains for years and years, but I bet they'll be here in 200 years. Uh, the iPhone is only 10 years old, it's probably only going to last another 10 years. Another way to look at it is beer is 10,000 years old, it's going to be here for another 10,000 years. Scotch is 500 years old, bourbon is 200 years old, New England IPA is 5 to 7 years old. Um, Eating and drinking uh, local products is a million years old. Uh, it's the most lindy thing in the world. Um, <clears throat> there was a brief time when the national was a fad, but uh, for the entirety of humans, we have preferred local to national. Um, national is not lindy. It will not last. Uh, this is not to say that we only like things made down the street from us personally. It means that we like stuff made down the street from somewhere. Uh, I assume everyone here drinks local beer. Um, so I've got to walk away from there. Um, local beer, uh, you know, be it Allagash or Trillium. But if you go to San Francisco, um, you're probably going to order their local beer. Um, that, I mean, even though you can get Allagash there, you're going to try what it is. The fact is that it's local to them is what sells it. Um, to take it to another realm, if you think about restaurants, um, the most Lindy restaurants are local restaurants. Uh, not just local to neighborhoods, but also local to themselves and their styles. Uh, Qingdao Garden in North Cambridge uh, has been there for years and is run by a very nice man who is there every night and uh, cooks all the food. And until very recently, his grandmother made all of the dumplings by hand. Uh, we want to eat grandma's cooking, even if it's someone else's grandmother. If we look at style instead of locale, we can see that uh, the local equals Lindy is also in effect. IPA used to be a very popular beer, and then it wasn't, and now it is. What never went away was English breweries. Uh, that's not to say they had it easy, but the English didn't stop drinking English beer. They just stopped drinking IPA. Um, or if you look at the number one beer in America, it used to be uh, Pilsner, and it was all you could get. Um, and then you couldn't get it, and now you can again. But German beer is still German beer, and the Germans didn't stop making beer, and they make Pilsners. Um, so, uh, you know, location is Lindy. This is not to say that uh, styles can't be Lindy. Um, Pilsner never went away. But if you think about Merlot versus Napa, um, they can change. You know, why is Scotch popular? More po importantly, why is Scotch Lindy? Because it's far more important to be Lindy than it is to be popular. Uh, scotch is Lindy because it is Scotch. Well, bourbon is bourbon. Uh, one isn't better than the other, they're simply from different locations. They ebb and flow in popularity, but it, in a hundred years people will still be drinking scotch and still be drinking bourbon. Um, and I propose this is because they're local. Not only are they local, they're jealously guarded local. Um, you know, the fork is still made right there. Um, anyone can make whiskey in the scotch style, in fact I do just that, um, but it is not scotch. Uh, my bet is that scotch will long outlast a uh, short path distillery. Whatever advantages, what advantages does Scotch have over a single company? Um, scotch is local to Scotland, which signals to the world it is from somewhere and is local to someone. We want to buy from trusted sources and we trust the Scottish on Scotch because it's what they drink. Uh, we want to know something is from somewhere even if it is nowhere that we've ever been. 
Uh, scotch comes in layers of localness. Um, if you look at Lefroy, Lefroy is uh, scotch, but it is also Islay scotch, and specifically is Port Ellen Islay scotch. Um, you know, it's, it's tied into the very level. So, previous talk was talking about, you know, people look at localness on the state level, but then you can, as you dial down, it's into the county level and into the city level, and now it's into the neighborhood level. Um, localness can be um, fractoral. Um, but let us not confuse uh, local with independent craft or micro. Uh, being independent craft or micro usually signals that you are local, um, but this isn't always true. Um, and it is better to be local than it is to be independent. Uh, Talisker is made on the Isle of Skye and it has forever. It's made right there, um, but it's owned by Diageo. Diageo never moved Talisker off of Skye because uh, they realized that it was far more important to be made on Skye than it was to have the brand on a bottle. New England is blessed with some of the best geography in the world. Uh, we have a complete variety of terrain. Uh, we have harsh winters, but they aren't that harsh. Uh, think about Minnesota or our summers aren't too hot, if you think about, uh, say, Carolina. Um, we live in a point in North America where the eastern seaboard suddenly juts out into the North Atlantic, and the Appalachian Mountains make a dive down towards the coast, bringing the mountains and uh, shortening that coastal plain. We also have the Gulf Stream and the uh, northern cur uh, Canadian currents of water coming down. Uh, so that we actually get a, uh, the effect of both the cold water and the warm water, which gives us a uh, quite a variety in weather. Um, we're also at the fulcrum of the jet stream and the weather coming across the United States. And once again, it's that uh, cross um, connection of the different uh, things. Um, so we have just like some of the crazy things that we have just in New England is uh, we have one of the oldest mountain ranges in the world, which is the Berkshires. They once were taller than the Himalayas. Uh, we have the rolling forested mountains of Vermont. Uh, the granite peaks of New Hampshire, um, endless sea of mountains in Maine. We have terminal moraines which, with pitch pines, cranberry bogs, and blueberry barrens. We have the Borel forests uh, and the peat bogs. We have the mighty white pine, which can grow to the size of redwoods. We simply just cut them all down. And the pines that you see today are baby pines, even the giant ones. You know, rolling hills, kettle ponds, uh, rich valleys, sandy beaches, um, rocky shorelines, and everything else in between. Um, and with this, we get all the different microclimates that come with it, uh, which gives us a very unique, well, it can't be very unique, unique uh, terroir. Um, and it is this exact terroir that Shore Path Distillery is looking to impart in our spirits. Um, we use exclusively Yankee-grown grains um, from Valley Malt, actually. Um, <clears throat> and that actually, I just realized I wasn't here, but. Um, Last summer, I was told by a bunch of distillers that it is impossible to make money using local grain. Um, but we have always used local grain and we continue to only use local grain, uh, which continues my theory that uh, the path of success is paved with people telling you it can't be done. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, uh, better is subjective. We can talk about all the different stats on to why you know, our stuff is better, but um, it's really doesn't have to be better, it just has to be good, and um, so better subjective, but place is not. Um, working with local companies uh, really allows us to um, have a lot of diamantism in our uh, products. So one of the things is I really wanted to do was to have a peat smoked uh, whiskey. Uh, Islay Scotch is my favorite kind of scotch, and I grew up in Maine, and there's a lot of peat bogs in Maine, and I always thought, why don't we use local peat? Um, so I went and dug some up, and Valley Malt was very kind enough to smoke um, uh, barley for us, and we got to use it, and actually I have our uh, peat whiskey um, for you guys to try today. Um, and it allows us to take uh, low-cost, high-reward bets by using um, little things. Another thing, working on uh, the terroir, is we work with little craftsmen's. Um, this is Ed from Portland Barrel Company. He uses exclusively white pine, or uh, Maine white oak. Jeez. Um, and uh, so this has, it's the, the northern range of white oak, so it has lower tannins and more sugar. And once again, it's just layering um, that terroir over and over again. Um, and then lastly, for distilled spirits, where they're um, aged is very important. 
uh, we distill in Everett, Mass., which is a suburb of uh, Boston, and we, um, we store it there. Um, and this gives us a nice little microclimate. Uh, Everett, especially the part of Everett we're in, is at the uh, uh, intersection of the Malden and Mystic River, which feeds into um, Boston Harbor. Um, it is, in the winter, about mm, 5 to 10 degrees warmer um, at the distillery than my house, which is just a mile or two inland. Um, so the onshore breezes keep it nice and warm, warmer in the winter. Um, and then in the summer, it has those same onshore breezes, which uh, keeps it cooler at night. But the biggest effect that we have noticed in our spirits as we've been aging them there is that the rivers cause a funneling effect of the uh, fog to come in, and we definitely get a distinct brininess in all of our spirits that are aged um, there. So um, this all leads to a distinct flavor of place, which is what we are going for. Uh, so what is the point? Um, the point is we need to give the world a reason to think Yankee made means something. Uh, the style isn't as important. The company isn't as important. Um, styles and companies come and go, but place does not. Uh, so what makes Yankee made local? Why should someone in Austin drink, eat, or smoke, I guess, um, Yankee products? More importantly, why should someone in Tokyo, Singapore, uh, Kinshasa, or Berlin see Yankee? or Northeast, or what we end up calling it, and know it's from somewhere. Because it doesn't matter uh, where you are from, as long as you are from down the street from someone. 